Welcome to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. Today we're going to be learning about the king of pop art, Andy Warhol. Pop art gets its name for two reasons. Number one, the images pop out with high contrast and bold outlines that make things look like they're jumping off the page. But second, pop art usually includes images of popular people, places, or things. Andy Warhol almost always included popular culture as an inspiration for his artwork. Andy Warhol's primary method of creating art was using a method called screen printing. Screen printing is an extremely useful way to create lots of copies of the same image. Now the printmaking method that I used for these pictures is super simple and only requires a clear plastic binder sheet that you know you put a sheet of paper in and some kind of a picture to put in it. You could use a photograph that you've taken or you could even like put a drawing that you've made in there or really anything would do. Markers a sheet of drawing paper, and some kind of spray bottle or some way to get this water slightly damp. We'll talk about that later. For starters, I wanna pick my colors, and I don't wanna use all the colors. I wanna pick just a couple of colors to work with here. I've got a pink flower, so I think I'll go with pink. I've got uh, this yellow section in the middle, so I think I'll go with yellow for that. I uh, think I might use this dark, this red for the darker bits, even though it's still more pinkish. Uh, I'm using what I got here. And maybe I'll do some black outlines of some kind. The rest of my markers can get tossed. What I'm gonna do is use these washable markers directly on this clear plastic sheet cover to trace my picture. I can start with the flower petals or really anywhere, but what I'm doing here is just coloring directly on top, tracing, taking my time to get nice and neat inside the lines, and just filling completely with color. Notice how I'm using the side of my marker, not the tip because I really want a lot of ink to get onto this transparency. You notice that it uh, looks a little different than it would if I was coloring on a paper. You can see that the ink is kind of splotchy and there are some areas where it makes more little puddly looking things and then there are other areas where it kind of leaves little empty gaps and all of that's going to be fine. It's actually going to be great. It's going to give us a fun texture when all of this is done. Now this particular method is a form of what would be called mono printing. With this method I'm only going to be able to make one print at a time so I can't really make a hundred copies exactly the same as each other. But the fun thing about this particular method is if I wanted to do the same uh, picture in different colors, I've still got it inside the clear plastic here so I could just wipe it clean and trace it with different colors and do it again and again and again. All right, so I'm finished now with the pink part. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my darker red for those um, darker areas on the leaves. And I can't really tell at the moment exactly how much darker that's gonna turn out on paper, but that's okay because part of the fun here is seeing, seeing how that final result comes up when you lift the paper off of this at the end. We'll see that step here in just a minute. The texture of the way that you, you know, the direction that you color and all of that kind of stuff won't come out exactly the same on your paper as it does on, uh, you know, the way you're drawing it. But it's, again, it's kind of fun to see just how much of an impact those kind of little changes do make. 
Now, I am going to go in at the end here with a black marker and just get some bold outlines wherever I think I want things to really, really pop. And I might want to kind of go around the edges since I've got this photograph. This will give me a nice border around my picture when it transfers to the paper. And this right here is why I saved black for last. If I had tried to do all, all of this detail stuff, these little textural elements here with uh, the black, if I had done any of that before, uh, then then it would have mixed with the yellow and it would have mixed with the pink. And it... Uh-oh, uh-oh, look what else happened. I put my hand on here and it's smeary smudged, but guess what? You know what? I can just, I can just redo. It's okay. It's okay. The world has not exploded. But I did learn from that that I need to not put my hand on the paper. I need to hold my hand up above and not press it, you know, not lay it on the table, not lay it on the paper while I'm coloring on here. When you're done tracing with washable markers, you get any kind of regular drawing paper. Now, this right here is an 80 pound weight, but really it just needs to be a stiff enough, sturdy enough paper that it can withstand being sprayed with some water. We need to get our paper wet and we don't want it super wet. I'm not going to put it in the sink and like soak it. I just want to spray it a little bit. So spray one side. Now, if you just spray one side, it's going to curl. You'll, you can start to see already the paper is curling. So I want to flip it and spray the other side too. And then it flattens back out because it's equally moist on both sides. But we don't want like lots of droplets. So what I'm going to do is just use another rag here to just kind of gently pat it. I don't want to like dry it. I, what I want is for the paper to be nice and smoothly wet. Just evenly wet. I don't want it to have big puddles of water anywhere and I don't want it to be dripping wet. Just barely damp, damp enough that it will pull up the marker without bleeding it across the entire page. And now this is where all the magic happens. I've got, this is my, my floppy flimsy paper where I've got it wet but not too wet. And what I'm going to do is very carefully set this down without letting anything slide. I wanted it to go straight down. And now I'm going to press it, but I'm just going to press straight down. I do not want to rub it. I want to, because if I rub it, then it's just going to smear and spread everything. I just want to press very gently and then lift, press gently and lift, press gently and lift. It really doesn't take much of this. All this is doing is pressing so that the water in the paper washes up the ink that's on the plastic sheet and pulls it up into the paper. This is the magical moment of truth where we see how our picture turned out. Just peel it off and voila. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that turned out. I am noticing here that the pink and the red turned out pretty much the same, so there wasn't a whole lot of difference there. Maybe I could, uh, if I was going to do another copy of this, I could do maybe pink and purple instead of pink and red. Or maybe I could just completely change the colors. Like this is a pink flower, but maybe I want to do it blue. Maybe I want to do it purple. Maybe I want to do it green. It could be anything. It doesn't really matter. Anyway. That is a mono print. This paper can be set aside to dry, and this can be with just a damp rag, not like, you know, drippy wet, but just slightly damp. You can wipe up all of that ink that's left over, and you're ready to either make another copy of the same picture or trade it out for a different picture 
And here comes paper number two, laying it down again ever so gently, trying to be very careful not to let it slide back and forth. Gently patting it, gently pressing it. Now this picture, I used these colors. I did pink outlines for the skin because he's got a very pinkish skin tone. I did yellow for the hair and the eyebrows. I did blue for the shirt and the eyes and black for a couple of outlines, not too much with the black, basically just around the eyes. I really wanted the eyes to shine, um, really pop out. So now it's the moment of truth, the moment of truth, whoosh. Oh, I love it. Oh, except I forgot his nose. I forgot, I, for uh, I forgot his nose. <laughs> well, <clears throat> okay, what do I do about that? What do I do about that? I get his nose. Real quick. Now, it is gonna be impossible for me to line up the paper in exactly the same place, so I might end up with like some double lines. I'm just gonna play and see how it happens. I'm really just pressing down where I think the nose is, and then lift it up, and here's the moment of truth. I mean, it's not terrible. It's definitely not in the right spot. You can see some doublage going on. Like this get, got doubled, the nose is a little bit too far to the right, but, you know, I could, if I don't like the way this turned out, just go back and do it again. No harm done. Don't want to forget that I need to wipe this clean before I do another one. And there you go. I hope you've enjoyed making some mono prints with me today. I hope you've enjoyed making art that pops out. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.